Hello, glad to have you with us here at the, the Jam. Uh, this is the 22nd year that Benika has presented this Sharper's Jam, and we're glad to have you here. It's a little different this year. Normally we have a, a group in a hotel and then we get to see everybody and uh, shake hands, but now we can't do that because of the virus, and we're happy to have you here with us, joining us during this video presentation of the Jam. We hope that you'll enjoy what's here. There's a lot of good education going on and a lot of information you'll be, have available to you. Uh, and what's good, it's going to be recorded, so you'll have it available at other times too. What I want to talk to you about today is what to do in hard times like this. The world has never been in a situation like this where the economy was shut down and we're starting to back up. But that's a good thing for you because in adversity, opportunities present themselves. And this is the time for you to really focus on your business and grow your business. Think about new things that you haven't done before. Uh, maybe you're not selling shears, you want to think about selling shears. Maybe you haven't been doing clipper blades, you might want to do clipper blades. Different things to expand your business. Let your customers know that while you were in your homes, you took that time to study. You were watching videos to hone your craft to make you better prepared to service them. Now this is going to be a time where you're coming back in and some people are saying, well, I want to cut my prices. Well, that might be a good thing, it might not be a good thing. If you do cut your prices, my suggestion is to do it for one month. Say we have an introductory, you know, back to business sale for one month and cut your prices on your sharpening. Uh, I do not suggest you cut your prices on your shears. I'll tell you later about what you can do to make your shears more exciting for your customers. But cut, do it for a month because, if, you know, with all the new restrictions and everything that the, your stylists are having to do, they're actually raising their prices in many places. So if you lower your prices, you're kind of going contrary. You're going trying to go upstream instead of downstream with the flow. So be aware of that. and. It's your business, that's what's unique about the sharpening business. You don't have somebody that tells you how to do your business. You do what you think is best for your company. One of the things I did was I went on the internet and checked on some how to sell in hard times or in, in the times like we're in today. And one was don't devalue your product. You want to keep it up there high. It's not worth less just because they've been out of business for a while. So you don't devalue your product. Maybe put value added to your product, but don't devalue your product. Keep your prices up there. Stay calm and come up with new solutions. Like I said, instead of cutting your price, add things to what you're selling. And add-ons and things like that. It makes it more exciting. It brings your product in a new light. And it makes it easier for you to approach your customers. I usually suggest that you be in your salons every, every two months. You might want to make it every month for a while. And it doesn't have to be very long or just drop by and say hello. You want to say, you know, Glad I was in the area, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, you know I'm out sharpening. If anybody needs my services, fine. Uh, it may be you may have to develop something like a pickup and drop off service. I don't know. Uh, every state is going to be different. They're going to come up with new regulations. How many people can be in the salon, and and all that. So you'll have to adjust your business to the situations at hand. But do it with a smile on your face and uh, express it as an optimistic opportunity for you to help your customer out, your client out. Take care of your loyal customers. Make sure you take care of them first, but then you have an opportunity to go out and see new customers. I usually suggest that you see your customers every two months. Now might be a time to make it every month go by and see your base customers. I always say that the best salespeople are fat people, and I always point to my belly and say I'm one of the best salesmen out there because I got one of the biggest bellies. So, fat means you're faithful to your clients. That's your base clients plus your new clients. You're available to your clients. You always want to be available to your clients. Respond to their needs. If they have an emergency, get to them as fast as you can. Teachable or trainable. F-A-T. Teachable or trainable. And this is a time where you can say, you know, I attended a virtual scissor sharpening convention. Here's my t-shirt that I got for the convention. I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, learned a lot of new things. They talked about all aspects of the business. Marketing. They talked about sharpening scissors, clipper blades, and all this kind of stuff. Anything you want to say, you know, let them know that you didn't waste your time while you were down. Also use this time to expand your new clients. You're going to have new opportunities out there. As you know, many sharpeners are older and it's a second career for them. Because of the virus, some of them had decided, hey, I'm not going to sharpen anymore. All kind of new opportunities out there for you to get, get new clients and stuff like that. So, Right now, you may have to work a little harder than you used to, but that's good because that makes it easier when you get into the future because you're going to have a bigger client base to cover. So look at new and intuitive things to do. You're a small business. You're the one who can decide what to do. I've worked for Fortune 500 companies, 
And one of the most frustrating things as a salesman is to know something to do that would help your sales and not be able to get it approved by the higher ups. Okay, you're the higher up. The buck stops with you. It's your company. It's your business. You do what's best for your business. And, you know, just you, we will give you suggestions, but ultimately it's your responsibility because it's your business. Number one thing when you're out there in the thing, you want to exude confidence. You want your people to know that you know what you're doing and you enjoy what you do. So let them know. You need to believe in your product and you need to believe in yourself. If you don't think you're a good sharper, guess what? Your clients aren't going to think you're a good sharper. If you think you're the best sharper in the world, they're going to think you're the best sharper in the world. Many of you know that there's some sharpers out there who do a mediocre job but make a very good living. One of the things about those people who are mediocre, they think they're the greatest sharper in the world. If you've ever been in a sharper's chat room, you've probably heard information that makes you cringe. You hear somebody talking like they're an expert and they're telling somebody exactly the wrong thing. You know, you go on the internet, you, they'll, they'll tell you you can sharpen your shears by cutting through aluminum foil. You want to exude confidence and tell people that you learned a lot of things while you were sitting down there during your downtime. Some of the important factors for your clients are, as far as a, a sharpener is concerned, is they want you to do a good job. They want you to do it at a fair price, and they want you to look halfway decent when you come in. You know, one of the disadvantages to sharpening in a van or in a trailer is at the end of the day, you're hot and sweaty. Sometimes you don't look your best. Uh, that's why we usually prefer to sharp inside, sharpen inside the salon. That may be something that changes with a new, new situation. Like I say, every state will be different, so you'll have to adjust your sharpening thing to that. Pick up and drop off is probably going to be more prevalent than it has been before. You need to remember that it's your business, you can make the adjustments, and you can be successful. That's what's going to make you different from some of the other sharpers out there. Always remember, the best advertising you can have is word of mouth advertising. That's your best tool. If you go into a salon and sharpen and they're happy with your work, encourage them to share that information on the internet, Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, you want to take pictures of people who are happy customers and get quotes from them. Put it on your website or your Facebook page and then hashtag them so when it goes to them, it'll also go to their friends. You want to use the media that's out there to get your message out to people. Let them know. Like I say, word of mouth advertising is your best advertising tool. It can also be your worst enemy if you're not doing a good job. Like I said, there's a lot of average sharpers out there make an excellent living. And the reason they do it is because they have they exude confidence in what they do and they, they're very good. They're good old boys and they get get along well with their customers. Uh, I tell the thing the story that, you know, you can be the best sharper in the world. But if you don't have people skills, you will absolutely starve to death. If you're an average sharpener with good people skills, you can make an excellent living sharpening. We want to make you an excellent sharper with excellent people skills. And if you pick up a new customer that somebody else has done that they retired, you want to see if they, ha they can refer you to new people too. Again, encourage them to get on their social media and promote you. Uh, where you find these new customers, of course, is just basically go to the internet. There's many websites on the internet you can go to. I think I put in a search for beauty shops in Gwinnett County, which is the county we're in, and I think it came up with like 650 salons in Gwinnett County alone. Another 150 barber shops were uh, located and also uh, several uh, dog grooming places. So it's easy to find new shops and they'll spring up all over the place. Anytime they build a new retail strip mall, there'll be a salon in there probably. So. Always be looking for new things. Just driving down the street, you'll find all the business you want to do. Don't forget the schools. The schools are an excellent opportunity for you to get out, especially if you're new to the business. Go to the schools, sharpen the, the, the kids' uh, shears, and uh, you know, hone your skill. Learn how to sharpen better there. You want to sell shears to the students. The average uh, student uh, school class will be about 15 people. Could be as little as four or five. Could be as many as 50 in the class. Uh, we've done classes where we had 250 people, uh, where they did the whole, it was a state school and they did the whole school there, all the people in the cosmetology and barbering things, and there was a class of about 250. We went to a Paul Mitchell school and had 55 students there. The same week we went to a school that had four students there. You want to know a little secret? We did more business in the school that had four students than we did Paul Mitchell on that particular day. But, just goes to show you, don't discount somebody calls it small. We've been in a, a situation where we were called to do some sharpening in a salon and they were only open at night. They were across town. 
we drove all the way across town. We went there and it was it was a salon, but it was next to a pawn shop. It was in a bad section of town. It had bars on the window. And they hadn't opened up yet. We got there before they opened. And, and there was a few people out in line getting ready to get their hair cut. They opened up the doors. We went in. We got in there. Nobody, none of the stylists spoke any English. We had four stylists there. Nobody spoke English. Luckily, there was some, a client who spoke English who interpreted for us. And Bonnie sharpened several shears there. And I think we sold three or four. We came out with $800 in cash in a salon that probably, if I was doing cold calls and just driving by, I wouldn't have contacted. If you're not taking credit cards, this would be a time to start taking credit cards. You need to take credit cards. Years ago, they used to say taking credit cards increased your business by 30%. It's, with us, it's about 40%, 45% of our business is credit card business. So you want to make sure that you're doing business with credit cards. Also, with this new situation, there's not a lot of salons aren't going to be taking cash. They're going to be doing all credit cards. So they, they're not going to have cash there. They're going to be doing credit business. You want to be able to do that credit business too. And you can do that, you know, um, many ways. The square is one way. It's the cheapest way. And as long as you're doing less than $1,500 business a month, cheapest, best way to do it. Credit cards are a definite asset. And in this day and age, you have to take them. If you don't have a website, build a website. If you don't know how to do it, go next door and find the 12-year-old and he'll build it for you or she'll build it for you. Kids today know how, know the internet, they know how to build websites, and you don't need an elaborate website. You just need something that says, this is the name of my business, this is the place, areas I work, this is how much I charge, and this is what I do. If you want to sell shares on your website, you can expand it later, and we can call us up and we can tell you how to do that. Also, some of you aren't carrying a whole lot of shares, just be aware, you can use our website. Take your customers to our website, show them the information there, let them pick out the shoe they want, and you can either sell, you sell it to them and we can drop ship to them, or you can say, you know what, if you're interested in this shear, I'll have it come, come to me and then I'll bring it by so you can try it before you buy it. The internet is your largest competitor when it comes to selling shears. Use it. Go to our website. Have your customer look it over. They're going to have retail prices there. They're going to see a shear they like. It's $198. Okay, you say, well, I, now there's two ways we can do this. I can have it. I can order it for you and have it drop shipped to your salon, or I can bring it in to me, come back and show it to you, and you can try it before you buy it. The biggest advantages you have over the internet and over your beauty supply houses is you have you can have the product there, you can show them the product, and they can try the product. That's what these these are touchy feely people. Stylists love new gadgets, and when they get a new shear, they're going to say, "Well, you know, you you weren't slide cutting before. That's simply because you had a beveled edge shear." Now you have a convex edge here, you can add slide cutting to your repertoire. You know, give them reasons to buy. Uh, one of the advantages to go using the internet is you don't have to hold a lot of inventory, but you can have a wide variety of products. Uh, now we'll talk more about inventory. It's always nice to have the product right there so that you can uh, hand it to them, let them try it, and develop, the, you know, develop a one-to-one -one relationship with your customer, but you don't have to. It's not quite as effective to order it over the internet, but it is a way to do that. Now, when you're out there sh setting your goals, we always talk to our, our clients that we train sharpeners and starting their own business. We talk to them about developing 200 core counts. And when I say core count, I mean you go into a salon, there may be six stylists there, but that's one core count. And if you can average $300 per account per year, you can make about sixty thousand a year. You want to make more money? You want to make seventy-five thousand? Okay, get two hundred and fifty core accounts. You want to make less? You're part time. You want to make less? You want to do a hundred? Okay, do a hundred and make thirty thousand dollars. So it just depends on you. And uh, the way I came up with that three hundred dollars was very simple. The average salon has six point three stylists in it in America, and I say the average stylist has four shears. You know better than I do probably that most stylists have more than four shears. I try to be conservative when I'm making sales presentations. Four shears times 6.3 gives you 25 shears in that salon. When you walk into the average salon in America, they'll have at least 25 shears in there that you'll have an opportunity to sharpen in the next year. If, you just, if you're charging $25 and you sharpen 12 of those, just half of them, in the next 12 months, that's your $300. That's how I came up with that figure. Now if you're charging $30, guess what? 
That's if you did the same figures we were talking to before, instead of making sixty thousand dollars a year with two hundred core accounts, you're making seventy five thousand dollars a year. So you decide what what's the price in your area and how many accounts you can do. Plan your calls. You have your core accounts. You want to make sure you plan them in a logical sense. I always suggest find your hometown. Decide how far you want to drive. <clears throat> Most people want to drive about. 50 miles away from home, that's about an hour away. Get a compass, put it on a map, circle 50 miles, divide that up into eight sections, and that way you're there every two months. During this time, I said you might want to call on every month. For a while anyway, until you get back into business with them, they get into the swing of things. Say it's Friday, you know you're going to be there Monday. Call them and say, hey, Monday I'm going to be in your area. I'll be buying sharpened shears if, any, if you or any of your other customers want to sharpen fine. And actually, it's probably better to text them. Because they, they will read their text, they may not answer the phone. So, uh, I'm old school. I like to talk to people, but I know texting is more more effective. So, uh, you handle the way you want to. And after if you've done business there, you go in there and sharpen. You sell them some shears. Call them back two days later. Ask them how they like the service. Make sure that everything's working. If something's going wrong in your sharpening situation, or if they don't like the shears you sold them, you want to find out two days later rather than two months later. That way you can take care of the situation, salvage the cell, or fix the, uh, the problem with your shears. Because you don't want them bad-mouthing you on social media for two months. You want to come back there and they said, you know, I had a problem with gene sharpening, but he came right back and fixed it. Then those customers are going to appreciate that. Always take your business cards and, and leave them everywhere. Business cards are a cheap and valuable service. Uh, you might want to try to get, when you go there, get all the business cards in the salon and try to get their emails and their IR codes and things like that so that you can you can text message them instead of call them on the phone. Uh, when we first got in this business, you know, 30 years ago, Bonnie was three and I was four when we did this, but uh, 30 years ago, uh, we used to send out postcards every month. And we'd send out like 300 postcards a month. And we'd spend, you know, about $150 on postage. And we'd spend three days. We'd have to take the address, put them on the postcard, put a stamp on the postcard, and go out there. So we had one guy, one person working about two or three days just to do our contacts for each month. Now Bonnie can go to the computer and she can spend about five minutes on the computer, send it out, and they all are notified immediately. They, you know, if you talk to them on the phone, you might get the uh, receptionist and it might not get back to the stylist. But if you send them a text message or an email, it's going to get to them. Uh, and it doesn't take that much time. Uh, Bonnie, sometimes when she does something special and she has a special running on sheer sales or something like that, she'll send out 10,000 emails and she does it in five minutes. Can you imagine what we're going to be going on if we were trying to send out 10,000 postcards? So, you know, use, the, use your technology to your advantage. You know, I talked about $300 per salon and that's kind of hard to keep in your head and figure. I suggest that when you go out every day you want to have a goal of sharpening 10 shears a day. If you're charging $25 a shear, that's $250 a day, that's $1,250 a week, that's $62,500 a year. So that's again right around your $60,000. If you're charging $30 a shear, you'll make three in new 10 shears, you'll make $300 a day, that's $1,500 a week, that's $75,000 a year. You decide how much you want to make. That's again an opportunity since you're in business. You can decide how hard you want to work, and you can decide how much money you want to make. Some of the sharpening companies out there tell you you can make $100,000 a year sharpening shears, and you can't. Uh, there are people out there who've done it. We know them. They were, some of them uh, are our customers, but they're working 60 hours a week to do that. Uh, they're also selling shears, too, and on top of that. You can, but you can make $60,000 a year just sharpening shears, uh, or $100,000 a year just sharpening shears. But if you add shears sales to that, you're going to greatly increase your business. Uh, locally around here, our, our son-in-law who does the sharpening, half the money he has come in comes from sharpening, the other half comes from scissor sales. All right, many sharpers out there are part-time sharpeners, and we found that uh, when we some of the surveys that we do at the Sharpener's Jam, uh, we've discovered that if they average 10 hours a week, they'll make about $15,000 a year. 20 is 30, uh, 40, uh, 30 hours is 45,000 and 40 hours they can make 60,000 a year. The average sharpener worked 28 hours a week, made about $42,000 a year, which is about $800 a week. 
I played with the figures a little bit, and I said instead of work, if the sharpener worked 40 hours instead of 28, and in our survey we found that they were the average sharpening charge was 22.50 a week uh, per per year, so we said change that to 25 dollars. Their weekly income would go up to about 1,268 dollars, and their yearly income would be almost 66 thousand dollars. So work a little act longer, make a little more money. If you're not making enough money, put some more hours in. And if you're making too much money, work less. You know, raise your prices. You know, lose some customers, work less. Uh, you know, if you raise your prices 20%, you lose 20% of your customers, guess what happens? You make the same amount of money working less. Uh, I once, during the, the uh, Carter administration, uh, I was in line at a grocery store, at a grand opening at a grocery store, and we were talking to the guy in front of me. And he, and of course, back then there was a lot of unemployment, there was a lot of inflation, and yeah, everybody was worried about their jobs and stuff like that. And got to talking to him, and he says, "I don't worry about my about employment. I have a skill that works to all types of uh, environments, economic environments." I said, "Oh, really?" I said, "Tell me what that skill is." And he told me. He says, "I know how to say, would you like fries with that?" And you know that sounds stupid, but what he's saying is he knows how to add to the order. He knows when he's in there talking to somebody. Uh, you go to a gro uh, to a, a fast food place and you order a number one. First question that comes out of the lady's mouth is, "Would you like to upsize that?" If you say, "Yeah, I'd like to upsize that," then she's going to say, "Would you like an apple pie with that?" And if you say yes to that, she's going to say, "Would you like to give me a fifty dollar tip?" You know, they add to the order. So you just be aware when you're in there. You're there to sharpen, maybe. But if you sell something, that's just adding to the order, making more money. Some, some of the things we want to talk about is we have special deals. We, have, we started a new deal. It's going to just come out. We've, we've just started this deal. You know, many of you know we have gold distributors where you get 25% off on your shares. And it's, it's a $1,000 package or $9.99. Uh, we had some people say, well, I can't afford $1,000. So we came out with a silver level. It's a, it's a level where you pay... Four hundred and seventy-nine dollars, and you get a package like this. That package contains seven shears and a razor. Four ninety-seven. It's going to bring you back right at a thousand dollars when you buy it. That's the way to get started. It's very hard if you have one or two shears to sell. Stylists are touchy feely people. They want it now. They don't want it two days from now. They don't want it next week. They want it now. So if you can give it to them now, you'd be more apt to sell. You can always do next week too if you have to, but you know, if you can afford it, buy some shears, have them available. Also, if you're going to do drop off and delivery, you're going to need some shears, loaner shears. Loan them shears. When you loan them shears, tell them, this is a brand new shear, I'm going to loan you. And then when you come back, you ask them, he says, how did you like the shears I loaned you? And they're going to tell you how they liked it. A lot of times they're going to sell the shear to themselves while they're talking about it. Okay, you already told them it was a new shear, so you sell them that one. If they say, I don't want to buy that one, I want one that nobody's used, I said, well, you were the one who used it, but if you want to buy one that nobody used, that particular shear is on, I'm selling you is on sale for 20% off. If I have to order a new one in, it's at manufacturer's suggested price. That shear was $160 you tried. If I order a new one in, uh, a brand new one in, since I'm not ordering in volume, I have to pay the regular sales price. That's going to be $200. Most of the time, they'll buy the $160 shear and buy what you have. And also, when you get the silver package, every new shear you buy after that, you get 15% off. If it's a shear that retails for $200 that you normally would pay $100 for, now you're paying $85. So instead of making $100, you're making $115 makes it nice. You can also use that. Would you like fries with that? That means you got an extra $15 there if you want to. You could throw in a razor, you could throw in a, you know, on oil, you could throw in some other things and we'll talk about that in a minute. The next one, the most popular package is our gold package and that's $999. It has 16 shears in it. It has three combs and a razor. This is the package right here. You can see it's full. You open it up and your customers are very impressed. Uh, if you're picking up and bringing back, you can say, okay, I'm going to pick up your shears if you'd like. Pick out a shear, borrow your shear, and uh, I'll sharpen your shears and pick it up when I come back. When you do that, make sure you get their name, write down what shear they borrowed, and write down what shears you took out. 
and have them sign at the bottom. That way, you know what's go everybody knows what's going on. And also, when you do that, it's best to do it on like a receipt book or something like that, because then they have the prices there too. You want to also make sure they know the prices, so they can even be thinking about being prepared to do that. This is a very popular thing. Again, when you buy this package, every share you reorder on, you get 25% off. If you have a retail share for $200, normally costs you $100, now it's costing you $75. That means you're making $125 profit on that share. Again, that gives you $25 to buy extra toys to go with it if you want to add fries to that. Add different things to it. Package it differently, and I'll show you that in a minute. Let's see. This year right here, the set right here, is a Jazzy and a Thinner. Price we sell at $98 to $98. You know, $196, or you might as well say $200. Okay, okay, this sells for $200. This sells for $200. Now, which looks more attractive to you? The two shears for $200, or the two shears with the four toys? That's adding fries to that. If you're a gold or a silver distributor, you can do this and still more than double your money, even giving the extra stuff to them. Now, you can also do things with that extra $25 or $15. You can lower the price on the second shear, or you can, you know, that's another option. If you're going to lower the prices, sell the first one at the regular price, use that lower price on the second one to get two shears instead of one. What we do sometimes is we'll charge, give them 20% off on the first one, and then another 40% off or 40% off on the second one. So in the case of a $200 share, our $250 share, 20% off makes it $200. And then if they buy the second one, they pay $160 for the second one. So they get $360 worth of shares, which you actually paid for if you're a gold distributor, $150 for. So you can see, you can see you're still more than doubling your money if you do that. Different ways to use that money. Uh, again, you're in business for yourself. You decide how you want to use it. Uh, Shear sales to me is it easy. To me, it's a lot easier to sell one shear, make a hundred dollars, than it is to sharpen four and make a hundred dollars. So you decide what you think. Uh, there, are, my son-in-law, when he first came to work for us, he says, "I'll sharpen shears, but I'm not going to sell shears. I'm not a salesman." He was in construction. He never dealt with the customers. He didn't want to sell shears. He reluctantly started selling shears because the customers were nagging him. They were saying, "Do you sell shears? Do you sell shears? Do you sell shears?" So he said, okay, I'll take some shears in there. Took some shears in there. Now he sells about six or seven a week. Now he does a great business with that. Half his income, I said, comes in from scissor sales, the other half from sharpening. He's very busy. Uh, usually he's booked up two or three weeks ahead. So he's got excellent business and he's making very good money. So uh, they just bought a new house and their house is bigger than ours. So, you know, uh, just be aware of that. So. Uh, Selling shares is a good way to make money. We have another, a couple of other things. We have a package similar to the gold package. It's called our platinum package. It has 20 shares in it. It has a lot of extra toys in there. That's $14.99. Uh, it'll bring you back, oh, about $3,600, I think. Then we have what we call the, the uh, diamond package, and that has 30 shares in it. This is what it looks like, and it's got some toys in it. Okay, you open it up. And look at this. You think your customers will be impressed? I think they will. You got 30 shears in there. You got combs, you got razors, all kind of stuff for them to look at. If they can't find what they want in here, they're very, very picky. But this is an opportunity for you to sell, and this is very impressive. You consult them on what tools they need to buy. You you need to educate yourself and or have us educate you on what each shear does, what, what the difference between a convex and a beveled edge shear is and uh, work on that. If you educate your stylist, they'll buy from you. You need to be more educated about their tools than they are, and you'd be surprised at how little education they get in school about the, the tool they use to make their money. So if you can educate them, tell them something about what a slide cutting do, you want to always be available to your customers with the shears and service. Again, you just don't want to be a sharpener. You want to be a salon consultant. Now, when I'm talking to the salons, a lot of times when I'm selling, I'll, I'll do turn. I use four closing techniques. I use the choice close. Would you like? I'll, what size shear would you like? I'll measure their hand. I'll take the shear. I'll lay it on the hand. Put it down that middle finger. When I feel it in right here with my thumb, it needs to be in this top digit here. Okay. 
That's how I measure it. Now, nowadays, you may have to give the shear to your stylist and let them put it in their hand. It's always nice to touch your stylist if you can. Right now, that's not a good thing to do. But let them measure their hand, get the right size. Once you find out what size it is, they say, well, that's, you're, you're a five and a half. Pull out three or four or five and a half, put them out there in front of them and say, try these and tell me which one you like. Okay, that's a choice close. They pick out two. You say, okay, that one's $160 and that one's $200. Which one do you like best out of that? Okay, and uh, they'll say, yeah, I like that. I like this one. So say they pick the $200 share. Okay, you say, fine. That's your choice clothes. They cho you asked them what size. You showed them several shears. Also, if they're, you're talking to them and they can't decide, you said, oh, by the way, if you buy today, I'll throw in a free case. We have five colors of cases. Now, you may not have five colors. You may have three colors. Whatever you got, show them the colors and say, which case would you like? They say, well, I want the black case. So you say, fine. You take the case and you plop it right beside them. Now, that's theirs free but they got to buy a share to get it. I don't know what it is about stylus, but if they can get something free, they want it. Another thing about stylus, okay, if they can get more off, they want it. So if, you, if you're going to the reduced price, okay, this one, this particular share is a $98 share. Let's say it's a $100 share. This would be a $100 share. So let's say they pay $100 for this one, which is normally $125, and they pay, uh, you get an extra 20% off on this one, so they pay $80 for that, they pay $100, $180 for that, and you paid uh, $75 for it, so you're more than doubling it. That gives you a chance to change one cell into two cells, and then guess what? You're in a salon with six people. You just sold two shares, 20% off and 40% off. The, cut that in half and that's 30% off, so now you would announce to all the people in the salon, hey, guess what? You know, I was telling you you got 20% off before, since Susie bought these two shears, I'm going to celebrate. Everybody gets 30% off, an extra 10% off if you'd like to buy a shear while I'm here today. And then this shear right here, which was $100, is now $90. It was normally $125, so now they're getting $35 off. Okay. 30% excites the people, more than 20%. Or instead of lowering the price, you could say, how would you like this if we include this supplemental package with it free of charge? Pay the price you pay on the shears, you get a free oil, free comb, free buffer, free razor, and something to wipe the shears down with. Would you like fries with that? Again, you're adding something to the order. Now, you're still going to more than double your money on this package, even adding these extra things to it. So that's a way to get some new business out of your customers, making it more attractive to them to buy and give them something extra. We have a value-added package here. This is an auxiliary package or a sample package you can give to them, something you can add to. Would you like fries with that? This is your fries. It's a razor, a comb, a buffer, an oil, and a piece of leather that they can wipe the shears down with. This costs you $15 extra. The retail value on all these things, if you were to sell it to them, would be $42. So you can say, I'll throw in these auxiliary pat tool package normally retails for $42. I'll throw that in free if you buy the shears. That's the way to use that extra $15, $20 you might make or whatever whatever it was for your discount. Add that in there. You're still more than double your money, but you add to it. You add fries to the order. You upsize the order. You get an apple pie on the order. Do those kind of things. You want to increase your business. Do things that help you do that. All right, I have some additional things to add to my little talk I did earlier. I noticed after I got through that I'd forgot to mention payment plans and that's one of the reasons why you want to have credit cards so you can do a payment plan and the way a payment plan works and I'm going to use the example to start off with uh, of a $250 share manufacturer suggested price $250 on our website and our suggested price for y'all sale price is $200 if you were going to do this on a payment plan uh, you would say well I need to collect one half down $100 now and plus whatever sales tax involved in, in Gwinnett County it's six percent so that would be uh, twelve dollars so I'd, I'd collect hundred and twelve dollars the first month and then I divide the other uh, hundred dollars into two monthly payments uh, or two er, er, whenever their paycheck is if they get paid every two weeks you could do it every two weeks but fifty dollars and fifty dollars and then the effort 
information you need, of course, you need their name, address, telephone number. You need the credit card number. You need the expiration date. You need the uh, uh, the security code on the back. You need their signature on a piece of paper saying you're allowed to take this money out and uh, run a little contract. And, and Bonnie will show you a picture of one of our contracts that we use when we do it. Uh, but this is an easy way to collect money. And you want to do the credit card because you don't want to have to go back in there and collect money each month and wait for try to catch them in the salon or catch them when they're not busy so this is a way you can do it you can sit at your desk and collect money uh, we do it and just put a date there and then every, every day we look at the stack of our, our payment things and see if there's any any payments that are coming due if they're due we run them on, the, on our credit card machine so you will need to have a credit card uh, for this you can do it with the uh, with the square it's no problem there but you, you need to take care of that and some of the other examples just say like if you had a jazzy shear which we our sale price is $98 you'd uh, collect uh, $49 plus our tax is $588 so you'd collect uh, $54.88 and then you divide the other uh, $50 in 25 and 25 payments and then a uh, rose which is $198 you collect uh, uh, a hundred dollars and plus the tax nine hundred nine dollars tax on that and then 49 and 49 on that for the next two months so you know you can break it up any way you want to and it's a way you can uh, make it easier for your customer to take care of that and if you want to you can put it whenever their paycheck comes and all this kind of stuff make sure it corresponds to that uh, as you know we have there's a company out there who overcharges for their shears and then gives them monthly payments this way you're not overcharging them uh, but you are breaking down the payments so it's a little more palatable for them so they don't have to put out so much money to begin with so again another good reason to have credit cards in your uh, repertoire of sales uh, I always ask that I always try to sell them for full price to begin with and then this is one of those choice closes I have uh, would you like to put it on time you know break up the payments half down then 25% and 25%. So this is a good way to uh, get some sales that you might not be able to get. And plus it brings in income to you when you're actually on, having some downtime. So again, you want to get that half down so you've taken care of yourself. Uh, make sure you've got your expenses out of the way. So if the customer, for some reason, you don't get any more money, at least you've taken care of yourself. And if you're a silver or gold distributor for us, you'll actually make profit on the first payment because you'll make either 15% or 25% on, on the scissor sale. So, you know, uh, I read on the internet that somebody said uh, it was a funny time. This is the first time they ever went into a bank with a mask on and asked for money. So, you may want to wear a mask when you go in there. It's just like, you know, you wouldn't walk into the salon without a shirt on. Now you're not going to be able to walk into a salon without a mask on for a while. Then when we can take them off, we take them off and uh, we'll all be more comfortable. But do what you need to do to get the business you need. And as always, we appreciate you coming to the jam. If there are any questions, we're available at the phone. Give us a call and we'll try to answer your questions. Or you can uh, email us and we'll answer the questions that way. Y'all have a great day. Look forward to the rest of the education throughout the jam and enjoy this. Hopefully next year we'll be in a, in a hotel and we'll be able to see you face to face. Y'all take care. Thank you very much.